Hi, good to have you here again. This video series is about Google Vertex AI training, a simple and scalable approach on how you can train your, your custom models on Vertex AI training. I regularly guide customers on how they can scale their training on the cloud, but every, every customer has their unique requirements and expectations to overall processes the same. We train a transformer model using the Stillbird with Vertex AI. And as a machine learning framework, I use TensorFlow. Keep in mind, it also work for any other machine learning framework like PyTorch, XGBoost, Scikit-Learn, you name it. And any other ML use case, so there are no limitations. So why should you use Vertex AI for training? Usually new ML projects start somewhere in a Jupyter notebook. So you implement your POC to prove you have the right architecture. Then at some point you need to train on a large data set, want to put your models into production, and hopefully you plan to ditch your notebook at some point and put your implementation into a proper code repository. Vertex AI training helps you to automatically provision and deprovision the infrastructure needed for your training. But well, there's no need for ma manually maintaining a VM. And you can train at scale by defining the machine types and accelerators, GPUs, or TPUs needed for your size of model and data set. And if you're working on large data sets, you have support for distributed training. On top, you get proper locking and debugging options, but it's almost like training on your local machine, just at larger scale. And if you're still running your training manually on a VM or on a notebook, Please don't, there's really no need for that. So let's get started. To train with Vertex AI, we need to package our training code. That is needed because in addition to our training pile, we might have additional Python files and dependencies that are needed to run our training. There are two main ways to pack our training code and dependencies. The first one is by using a custom container uh, to pack your code and dependencies into a Docker container and then upload them to the Google Container Registry. It provides the most flexible way and is, in my opinion, the best approach. Second way is by using Python source distribution with training code and dependencies uploaded to the Google Cloud Storage as an alternative. Just to mention them, there are three more alternatives. We could also use auto-packing using the Google Cloud CLI or gcloud command. It, it automatically creates a Docker container for you, uploads it to the Google Connect Container Registry and starts the training. This approach is less recommended as you're not able to do hyperparameter tuning. And in addition, it requires you to have Docker in your local environment. Google recommends using auto-packing if possible. I would not agree with that, and the reasons for that I cover later on in this video. Next alternative is by using the Vertex AI Python SDK and a custom training job class. But it only works if your training is just in a single Python file. It would then automatically create for you the Python source distribution and again upload it to the Google Cloud Storage. Same limitation as with auto-packing, so I also would not recommend this approach. And the last alternative is by using Vertex AI training pipelines instead of custom jobs. Um, but we cover that in another video. For now, we focus on Vertex AI training with custom jobs. In any way, I would recommend using custom containers over the other alternatives for the following reasons. It makes it easier for us to integrate it into the ICD environment. And additionally, dockerizing the training application reduces the issues with Python dependencies, and it allows us to execute the training basically on any environment. Hyperparameter optimization is supported, and different versions of the training application are still available in the container registry, so rollbacks are very easy. The overall process to create a training application with a custom container is fairly easy. Usually, you already have already somewhere your, your training implementation laying around, in a Python file, for example. The next step we need to do, we need to put it into a, into a, a container image. And for that, we need a Docker file. And we're using Cloud Build to take this Docker file and build a container image, which we then push to the container registry. And then the last step, we call Vertex AI, for example, with the SDK or with gcloud to submit our training job to Vertex AI training. Let us head over to the code. I'm again, as always, using a Google Colab notebook, so you can execute it yourself. The link is in the video description below. The notebook itself is structured into the training application. Then we need to do some authentication in order to be able to communicate with the Google Cloud Platform. We create our custom container using Cloud Build, and then we initiate two training jobs, one with gcloud and one with the Vertex IS SDK. So we start with the training application. 
The training application is nothing else than just a simple Python file for now, just a training Python. I'm not going into the details of the machine learning code because we're skipping this for today. We just focus on the Google part. The training code itself, there is no need to do any changes on it. So it's just your ordinary, your ordinary Python code and you can take it and just train it on Google Cloud. The only thing you need to add is some logic to store your model on, the, on Google Cloud somewhere. So I store my model on the finely trained model on Google Cloud Storage. So I have a little helper function, which basically just uploads the finely trained model to Google Cloud Storage Path. That's all in addition what is needed to actually train your code. I could also execute this Python file locally. So there is no, no emulation or debugging needed. I, I could debug the code locally and then just um, upload it to Google Cloud for training. The second step needed is our Docker file. So first we, we execute this, this cell and you, you see, I wrote a file to the file system. So if you go to the file system and reload, yeah, there's already, we see a training Python file. This is because I use a magic command, write file. And with this command, the, the, the output of the cell is written to a file. We need that because we want to later on build our uh, container image based on these files. So we're writing them to the file system. The next one we need is a, is a Docker file. And I'm using a TensorFlow base image here. In this case, a base image with a GPU because we want to use GPUs. So I also have to use the base image for, for GPUs and uh, TensorFlow because we are training a TensorFlow model. Then we have some additional dependencies we need to install. I'm using Hugging Face Transformers and I mentioned already Google Cloud Storage. So I need to install the dependencies as well. And I always recommend to pin down the versions to a specific one to prevent any unexpected issues if you deployed to, to uh, if you build your con Docker container again tomorrow, maybe the version changed, maybe there is a breaking change and then it will fail. So always pin down your versions. And if there's a need to upgrade, change the versions manually and test it properly. So um, we also create this Docker file and you can see I copied the training Python file to the, to the Docker image and we have the entry point. So our training file we want to execute for, for, this, for this training step. The next step needed is a cloud build JAML file. We need it in order to build our container image and then push the container image to the container registry. And for that, we use Google Cloud Build. And with this, with this cloud build JAML file, we define our, our cloud build steps. So we also write it to the file system. Next step needed, we need to authenticate this notebook because we now want to initiate our cloud build shop. And for that, we need authentication in order to be able to communicate with the Google Cloud. So I do the authentication. Now I get, uh, usually you get a pop-up and then you have to select your, your email address, your Google account. And I also set up the project ID that we want to do the training. And the next step needed, we need to create our um, cloud build job. So we submit our cloud build jammer. Remember the, the steps needed to build our container image and we submit it. And it takes now a couple of minutes. It's now, uplo it's now uploading the, the local files to Google Cloud Build and Google Cloud Build will start the, the Docker build process and then uploads the Docker container automatically to the container registry. So I will now stop on my side um, I need to wait a few minutes for you, just a few seconds. So see you, see you very soon. So I am back. Um, we can see it took us two minutes and seven seconds to actually uh, build our Docker container. And we can now go to uh, the build history. And we see two minutes, six seconds. And if we have a look into the into actual steps executed. So we can see the first step is actually building our Docker container. And you've seen it's pulling a lot of, of images and also um, installing the dependencies we, we required like Google Cloud Storage or the transformers. And then we are pushing the, the image to the Google container registry uh, in the next step. So you can see the, the Google container registry path here. And if we have a check, a look into the Google container registry. So we reload, we can see there is a new image one minute ago, just now uploaded. So the image is now there in the container registry and we can use it to actually initiate our training process. Well, let's go back to the notebook. And the first way uh, how we initiate the training is by using G Cloud. 
So I just have a, have a little uh, bit of helper functions here. I have a timestamp, so the, the job ID has to be unique. And then I define a custom container image URI, which is our um, custom container image we just created with our training code included. Then we define the worker pool spec. So we need to define the machine types we need for our specific type of model or data set. In my use case, I use an N1 standard 8 machine and an NVIDIA Tesla T4. There are a lot of different machine types and also GPUs. Um, we can head over to the documentation to see the different machine types. So it's just the standard machine types. Same for the GPUs, just the standard NVIDIA uh, GPUs for you available. Let's go back to the code. Nothing really special here, but where, where, all, where it all comes together is with the container spec UI. So there we define it. So we have now our worker pool specs and also the container specs, everything we needed. And now we actually can create our um, training job. So we execute the Cloud command and it cannot execute the, the file because I didn't vote the config jumble to the file system. So we execute the cell and now we have it here on the left side as well, our config jumble. And now we can execute the training job. Takes a couple of seconds. And now the job uh, is initiated. And if we head over to Vertex AI, you can go to training and then to custom jobs. And if I refresh, you see we have a training job pending. This is our just now initiated uh, training job. As alternative, we can also use the Vertex AI SDK by first in installing it. Don't get, con get confused. AI platform, the old product, the old platform, and Vertex AI is still sharing the same, uh, same SDK, so don't get confused. Um, we install it. It's already uh, quickly done because I installed it already. Then we import it, we initiate it. Then again, we have similar uh, worker pool specs, same container image URI. And then we use the Vertex AI SDK, create a custom job with our worker pool specs. And finally, we run our job. And now, if we now go over to Vertex AI again, again to the training section, custom jobs, and refresh the page, we should see a second training job just starting. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this um, video about Google Vertex AI training with custom containers. If you like, like, subscribe, and even better, leave me your uh, comments below um, with all your questions, all the stuff you ever wanted to know. Happy to do more, to do more videos for you. See you next time. Bye.